Hello, and in this next series of videos, I want to talk about nonlinear op amp circuits. That's circuits which use op amps but do not behave in a linear fashion. First of all, a quick reminder of what I mean by linear circuit behaviour. A linear circuit is one in which if the inputs increase by a factor of x, then all the outputs will increase by the same factor of x. Double all the inputs and you double all the outputs, and so on. Most of the op-amp circuits that we've looked at so far, including the non-inverting, inverting, differential and summing amplifiers, are all linear circuits. However, there are two groups of op-amp circuits which are interesting and useful but which are not linear. The first group is a set of circuits in which the op-amps are in saturation all of the time. And an op-amp in saturation is definitely not a linear component, since if you double the inputs, the output probably won't change at all. It's saturating. It's already at its maximum possible positive or negative voltage output. And the other group of circuits are ones in which there is a non-linear circuit element, usually a diode, somewhere in the circuit, either in the input network or the feedback network of the op-amp. And we'll be having a look at some examples from both groups of circuits in the following videos. In this first video, I want to start with the most basic non-linear op-amp circuit, a circuit which actually doesn't require any other components at all apart from the op-amp, and that is a comparator. This is a basic comparator. It has two inputs, VA and VB, and an output Vout. And the job of an ideal comparator is to output a positive voltage if VA is greater than VB, and in this case ground, another lower voltage, when VA is less than VB. And you can make that very simply using a simple op-amp wired up like this. You may remember that for an ideal op-amp, the voltage output is equal to a constant known as the open loop gain, typically very large, 100,000 or so, times the difference between the non-inverting input and the inverting input. In the circuit that we've got here, that would give us that V out equals A times VA minus VB, and A typically very large, 100,000 or so. Now, that would mean that if VA was greater than a few tens of microvolts above VB, then V out will be saturating positive. Consider the case where VA is, let's say, 1.3 volts, and VB 1.2 volts. Then, if A is 100,000, the right-hand side of this equation would give us 100,000 times 1.3 minus 1.2, which is 10 to the power of 4, or 10,000. Well, the output of this op-amp cannot get to 10,000 volts, so it does the best it can, and it goes up to its positive rail, assuming that is that this op-amp does have rail-to-rail -rail output votes. That would mean that, in this case, the V-out of our op-amp would actually be 5 volts. On the other hand, if VA was less than VB, then the output of the op-amp would be at its lowest possible voltage, which in this case is ground. So this circuit works very well as a comparator, provided the difference between VA and VB is greater than a few tens of microvolts. But if it isn't, if, say, VA minus VB was one microvolt, then the equation here, the characteristic of our op-amp with a open loop gain of 100,000, would give me that V out equals 10 to the power of 5 times 10 to the power of minus 6, 10 to the power of minus 1, 0.1 volts. That is neither the minimum possible output nor the maximum output. That is somewhere in between. And an ideal comparator would never give you that in-between value. 
That's one of the issues with this very simple form of comparator. There's another slight problem with this very simple form of comparator as well, and that is that it's often used as a interface between the analog world and the digital world. Now, real analog signals always have some noise associated with them. So our real analog signal, say VA, might be doing this kind of thing. As it goes up between 0 volts and, in this case, 5 volts. And what we want to do is turn this into a digital signal which tells us whether VA is above or below some logic threshold. Maybe, let's say, 2 volts. And if we just use this comparator circuit here, what would happen is down here, when VA is a lot less than 2 volts, VA on our non-inverting input would be less than the 2 volts that we would put on our inverting input here. We would build this circuit like this, with VA going in there and 2 volts as our reference going in there. And the output of the circuit would be at naught for all of this time, until we get to this point here, when VA goes above the threshold. At that point the comparator suddenly switches and the output shoots up to 5 volts. But only a little bit later the output goes below the threshold again. It's just caused by the amount of noise in our analog signal. So the output of the comparator goes all the way back to zero. And at this point here it would go all the way back to 5 volts. And then VA, the input, crosses the threshold once more at this point here, and the output would go all the way back down to zero again. And finally, VA goes through the threshold for a fifth time, which means the output will go back up to 5 volts and this time stay there, because VA never goes below the threshold again. But that's not an ideal input to a digital circuit. It would be much better if we just had one clean rising edge coming out of our comparator when VA went through the threshold. Both of these problems can be solved by adding a small amount of positive feedback around the op-amp. And we'll see how that works in the next video.